Are you looking to get a detailed reading of your PoE device's power? Then keep on watching to see our PoE tester Gen 2 in action. Today's video comes as another request from some of our subscribers. We read the comments about seeing a more detailed application video for the PoE tester Gen 2 and thought it was a great idea. So in today's video, I'll go over how to use each function of the Gen 2 tester and hopefully answer some of y'all's questions. Let's jump on in. I'll start with an unboxing. There is some basic overall product info on the back of the box. Once you open it up, the first thing you should notice is the manual. I won't be going over this booklet in detail since I'm demoing each function, but you can find a detailed online manual in the description box. Now let's take a look at the tester itself. You'll notice the LCD screen in the middle, a spot labeled PoE, a spot labeled DC, with each corresponding port a female RJ45 for input PoE, and a female 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel for input DC voltage. And on the bottom we have another female RJ45 port, and another female DC barrel, which is for your load side, or your powered PoE device. Notice the ergonomic grip as well that can fit easily into your hand with comfort. On the back of the tester you'll notice simulate PoE device with an option for on and off. I'll go over this function later in the video, but this is an important feature for the tester. This also comes with a male-to-male 2.1mm DC cable for your testing needs. As a brief overview, this tester can be used to measure the power consumption and performance of any DC power supply as well as activate any port on an IEEE 802.3 AF, AT, or BT switch. It is also PoE powered, so there are no batteries required. It can read a PoE voltage range of 12 to 57 volts and a DC range of 3.5 to 56 volts. It is rated for 802.3 BT readings, so for mode A and B, it can read 0 to 1500 milliamps with a 2% accuracy, and the DC connector can read 0 to 5 amps, also with a 2% accuracy. When testing mode A, this Gen 2 can detect both polarity types, however, if using reverse mode B, you will need additional cable accessories. To demonstrate a power supply reading, I'll be using 24 volts DC. Once you connect your power supply to an AC outlet, simply connect the male DC barrel into the DC port on the source side, or the top, of the tester. Once connected, you'll notice the screen display 24 volts DC with no power to device connected. To look at the power draw, simply connect your power to device into the load side of the tester, and notice the screen start to scroll with the wattage and amperage your device is pulling. To test a different range, I'll do a 56 volt DC power supply. You'll notice again that once we connect the power supply, the screen turns on showing 56 volts is available with no powered device. Then as soon as we connect our load, the power consumption is displayed. Now we can talk about the simulate PoE device feature on the back of the tester. This is an important feature on the tester because it allows you to activate any port on your PoE switch or injector. You will see that simply connecting the category cable from your PoE port into the source side of the tester does not turn the screen on. However, if we flip the simulate PoE device toggle on, which activates the negotiation, the AT4 injector then recognizes the tester as a PoE powered device and displays the voltage available. On the other hand, we have a passive 24 volt mode B PoE source with the toggle turned off and the display turns on immediately. The same goes for this passive mode A 48 volt PoE injector. With the toggle turned off, the display turns on right away. Now 
Now I'm going to demonstrate how the tester can be used to test 802.3 BT power. To demonstrate this, I'll use one of our high-powered PoE splitters. This can output 12 volts DC up to 72 watts. It accepts 802.3 BT or PoE++ power input. For my power sourcing equipment today, I'm going to use a GBTS-10-8-55V 370W PoE switch. This is one of our PoE switches that can support 802.3 BT power for up to 8 devices. It supports either pre-standard UPoE or 802.3 BT devices. There is a toggle depending on which type of power you're testing. So you have UPoE or 802.3 BT. For today's purposes, I want to make sure I switch it over to 802.3 BT power. To begin, we want to make sure that we turn the Simulate PoE device toggle on. Then you'll just connect the cable coming from whichever PoE port you're testing into the source side of the tester and wait for the tester to power on. As you can see, this shouldn't take more than a few seconds and it does display that the power is outputting on both modes A and B with an output voltage of 54.4. Now we can start testing for the 802.3 BT power draw. Once I connect my power device to the load side of the tester, you'll notice that the power draw starts to scroll on the screen. One important feature to note when using this Gen 2 tester for 802.3 BT testing is that in order to test up to PoE++ power, you'll want to make sure the simulate PoE device toggle is turned off so that the tester is in passive mode. As I slowly increase the load from our 12 volt high powered splitter, you'll notice that the wattage draw on the PoE tester increases as well. I stopped the power draw at about 62 watts to stay within the capacity of our load cell tester, but you can see that the Gen 2 tester kept a steady reading as the current draw increased. That does it for today everyone, but thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Interested in other types of videos? Leave us a comment on what you'd rather see. Don't forget to follow us on our other channels too. We post to LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now Reddit. Check out our POE Connect thread and join the conversation. See y'all next time.